G'day and welcome to another video. In today's lesson we are going to learn how to make a chain scarf. This project is perfect for beginners because we are using beginner stitches. It's a chain and we also use a single crochet. So they are the basic stitches that you will learn when you start to crochet. There's a number of different ways you can wear this one and I'll show you in just a second how, you, how else that you can wear it. My version of the chain scarf has a little section that is located on the left hand side and this is great for attaching crochet flowers or anything that you would like. So you can wear the flat section at the back if you didn't want it to show or you can wear it at the side and attach your favourite flower. In the video we also learn how to make our scarf long like this or you could also wear it short. It is very easy to make your scarf short you can either have one layer or you can make it an extra long and then double up your scarf to make it nice and thick. I think this is going to be really nice and cosy during the winter months. As you can see Rachel isn't exactly dressed for, for winter but I just left her without hardly any clothes on so that you could see the scarf and see how it sits. So to make it a short one all you've got to do is twist the yarn and then flip it over your head and then you just sort of organize your scarf so that it sits nice and pretty and maybe not like that I would suggest doing it in the mirror in the mirror so you can see what you're doing <laughs> so let's get started on the video for this project we're going to need a sharp pair of scissors a yarn needle with a quite a big eye on it for today's project we're going to need a crochet hook that goes with your yarn. I've got a 5.5mm hook or a size I or a size 9. This hook was supplied by Moonshadow Threads. They're fantastic hooks, they're really comfortable to use, they're nice and lightweight and I will put the link below the video so you can go and check out to get your own. A nice pair of sharp scissors, a yarn needle with a nice large eye so it's easy to thread your yarn. And I'm going to be using worsted weight Vanna's Choice and also some Impeccable as well which I'm pretty sure is worsted weight as also. You can use any yarn you like for this project and then just use the hook that's recommended for your yarn. So let's get started on the project. I've just decided to change my background because I didn't think the cream would show up on the white so a bit of exciting because I haven't used my black background yet, it's my new one. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with a slip knot and you, you can use one strand of yarn for this project but I want to make my scarf nice and chunky so that's why I'm using two strands. So to make your slip knot I'll show you with one piece so that it's easier to see. There's plenty of different ways to do this. There's probably over 20 different ways but this is how I do mine. I hold the short piece in my between my fingers, wrap my yarn twice around my finger Grab both pieces of yarn like so, grab the left one over and off, grab the yarn that's attached to my ball, wrap it around my finger once more and pull off like that. And then you can just tighten the slip knot to your hook. There's also a different way which is to make a loop, so just lay your piece over the top, grab your loop Push your fingers in, grab the yarn that's attached to your ball and pull up. Like I said, heaps of different ways to do it. So choose one that you feel comfortable with. So we're actually, actually going to use two strands. So we want to make them both together. Still the same process. Putting your slip knot onto your hook. And this project is perfect for beginners because it's using the chain stitch and the single crochet which are really really easy and they're the ones that you first learn. So let's zoom in a little bit. Not that much. But. So we're just going to chain, so we're just wrapping our hook underneath our yarn, grabbing both strands at the same time. If you've only got one you're going to grab one strand and pull through the loop. 
Now these two loops are classed as one because you're using it as one strand even though you've got two. So you're yarning over, putting your hook underneath your yarn and then pulling through. So we're just going to do this and we're going to make a heap of these. And I'm going to continue on and make a chain and show you in the next part of the video how long you can decide to make it. So we are just chaining. And this will, if you're a beginner, this will be perfect for practicing as well, because this project's not going to matter if they're not all exactly the same. And that will practice on your tension as well as getting them even as well. So stay tuned. Uh, next part of the video it will show you how to or how long that we need to make our chain. I've made my chains about a meter long so it's just one continuous chain and what we want to do now is put it on and try it on for size. So if you want yours really nice and long, so I'm just putting it on Rachel, if you want yours really nice and long this is almost down her belly button if she had one. Um, that's how long you'd make it, but I don't. I actually want mine to be doubled over. And what you're going to do is make sure that this will go over your head. Rachel doesn't have a head, so I can't try it on. But I just tried it on my own, and it actually fits over my head, because otherwise you won't be able to put, put your scarf on. So if you want it single, single like that, it's not going to be as full and as, um, as much to the scarf. But if you double it over like so, it will be. So decide on whether you want it single like so, or if, if you're going to double it over. If you're going to have it single, you may not want your chain as long, so you may only make the chain so it sits like that. And what I'm doing behind is just holding the chain together. That's the end of the chain and that's where I'm up to. So if you only want it that length, you only have to do that many chains. But if you want to double it over, you'll need it nice and long, so you can twist it and put it over your head. So let's get started on the next section of the scarf. So grabbing the end of our scarf, we are going to join our chain together so that it makes a continuous circle. So going into the first chain, grabbing my yarn. Going into the first chain we're going to, hang on a second, I'm all over the place, there we go. In the first chain, get these little fellas out of the way, we're going to do a slip stitch. These two just want to get in on the party don't they? There we go. So you're going underneath your yarn, you're going to pull through the loop and then you're going to pull through the loops on that side and that is a slip stitch and now that is joined together and what we want to do now is chain one because we're making that little section that was on the scarf that little squarey rectangly section so what we're going to do is, depending on how big you want your little section to be, is how many crochets you're going to do. We're going to work a single crochet. So going into the next chain, we're going to yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through both loops, because this is counted as one, even though it's two, and that's counted as one. So pull through both loops. We're going to get into the next chain. Now if you only use one strand of yarn, you're only going to have one strand of yarn there instead of two. So it's yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two. Next chain. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two. So you've got this much of your little rectangle section so far. So we're just going to continue on doing that single crochet. Just 
So the first part of a chain when you're ever working into it is always a little bit fiddly because there's not really much to grab onto. So if you're having a bit of trouble, don't panic too much. It's quite normal. Even with years of practice it's always harder to do that first row. So what have I done? I've done one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight stitches. I might do ten altogether, that's a nice even number. And make sure you both grab both loops so you have only grabbed one. So pull that back out. Of course if you're using two yarns, if you're only using one you won't have to worry. Okay, so let me just recount those, make sure I have done ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So that's how wide I'm going to have mine. That's about one, two, three inches across, or about ten centimeters, roughly. And what I'm going to do now is start chaining again. And we're going to keep chaining until we have, so that's ten, this is all nice and neat and flat. That's how much chaining I've got. We're going to chain around until we have exactly the same length as what we've done before. So I'll do my chaining and then I'll come back and show you what I've done. So you don't, no need to count in this project because who wants to keep counting all those chains? Not me, that's for sure. Because this is kind of like a messy scarf, it's not all you know perfect and nice and it's not nice and perfect. If you've got one or two extra chains on one of your rows, it's not going to matter. So I'm just going to keep going. So what we're doing is we've got our little section we started. We've got our chain coming off there, and we're just going to keep going until we've got it. So it's the length of this on here. So big projects are quite hard to fit in the camera. So up here is where we did our little section of I did ten single crochets, and then we've chained along. Dun, 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 chain, 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 chain. Keeping going, and then we are up to here. My hook's still attached in there. So what we need to do is make it so it's the same length. So we just lining. I mean, you don't have to make it the same length if you want to make it all different lengths, hey, go for it. It's your creation, so you don't have to do exactly like what I'm doing. Okay, so that's basically the same length. And then up here is our little section we're doing. And what we're going to do is we're going to join this chain into here. So I'll be back in one sec, I've just got to reattach the camera to the tripod. So I'm back. So you'll know what side you need to join in because it'll have one less chains because you've got one and two coming out of that side and there's only one coming out of this side. What we need to do is... Now if you're just beginning you may not know if that was the right way up. So maybe you might want to add a little piece of coloured yarn or something, a different colour down the bottom here, that'll let you know that's the bottom. You know what, let's do that now. Just getting a scrap bit. So we're just adding it down the bottom, so you've got two coming off that side, and you've got one coming off this side, so the bottom is where it's coming off the bottom, and the top end there won't be anything coming off it, so this is the row down here is our bottom. So I've just put my chain through the bottom there, uh, my hook, sorry, through the bottom there. Just putting on a piece of wool. This will even help me too, like just because I'm not a beginner doesn't mean I don't need to remember. There we go. Not too tight because you want to take it out. So grabbing our chains back on there we 
going to grab the top of this so it's here we're going to put our hook underneath that stitch there so you'll have two loops if you used one strand you'll have four loops if you use two strands of yarn pull up a loop and then we're going to pull this loop through there so grabbing it with our hook and pulling it through just pull on that a little bit if you need to and there we go, oh, there's these ends again go away, there we go and we've joined our two chains to the other side as well now if you don't want to have your section really wide but you want to have a lot of chains what we're going to do is we are going to slip stitch across and what that will do is not make our row any higher if you don't want yours to be really bulky with the chains you could single crochet across there instead and that will make that another single crochet row higher but because I don't want it to grow too fast I'm going to slip stitch so we're going to go into the next stitch I've got the, the two V on the top there and I'm going to work a slip stitch do not make this too tight we're just going to slip stitch across so it's just nice and loose and in each stitch across that's what we're going to do nice and loose you don't want to work it too tight because that will make your work start to pucker up or gather up So, in all the stitches across, so just work your way to the end. So, our last stitch is here. Not the chain stitch, but the single crochet from before. So see how it didn't really make it very much higher at all like it's only it's going to make it slightly higher but when we come back we're going to work over those stitches and they won't even add to our height so make sure you've got both loops not just one if you've got two strands and now it's start chaining again so we're going to start chaining again until we have the length of the previous chain like we did before and then we're going to join it to the other side and we basically this is pretty much all of the pattern so on our next row though instead of slip stitching across we will single crochet across so I'm going to just do my chain off camera and come back and show you what to do next so just like before my chain is the same length as the other ones so making sure your piece of yarn is at the bottom if you put one in we're going to slip stitch to join and if your slip stitches are like mine they've sort of curled over towards you they're at, like they're here they're not on the top so you just want to sort of push them up so that at the top and we're going to slip stitch into that first stitch where we did our slip stitch it's a lot of slip stitches So we're yarning over, pulling through, yarning over, pull through the loop on the hook and that's joined that to there. Now these little stragglers are really starting to annoy me. So what we're going to do is we're going to weave the ends in. You can do this at the end, it doesn't matter. But I'm going to do it right now because they're really, really bugging me. So grabbing your needle, I've cut mine a little short or started my slip knot off with them a little short so what I'm going to do is thread the needle through, or through, through some stitches first and then I'm going to thread my needle 
So what are the chances I can get both? Probably zero. Oh my goodness. So you're just putting your needle underneath the stitches that we've got there. Make sure that it's not sticking out the back and just pull through. You want to do that for at least an inch. Trim off your tails. And there we go, it's gone. And now I continue on without frustration. So what we're going to do now is work single crochet, but we're going to work over our slip stitches. You can work the single crochet into the slip stitch, but you know what? I find it quite hard to get them. So what we're going to do is we're going to work below the, the slip stitch. So we're going to work into the stitch below. We're going to go into below the stitch. So the slip stitch is up here. You're going to go below. Underneath it. So pulling up a loop and doing your single crochet. So your slip stitch is here. We are going to work down into there. Slip stitches here, working down into there. So you're basically going into the same stitch that the slip stitch was worked into. So there we go, keep working across until you get to the end there. Just had to count my stitches. So I need to do one more stitch for number 10. So what that did is, it was a little bit thick here, but we worked over the slip stitch, so we didn't gain any height from the previous row. So now it's the height of two rows of single crochet, even though we've done a row of slip stitch in between. So what we're going to do now is chain. Are you sick of doing chains yet? Plenty of practice will make your tension great. It does take quite a while to get your tension um, properly done. Probably, you know, at least a month, at least. So don't get too discouraged if it's not perfect within the first month of a lot of practice not just every now and again quite a lot of practice and it probably come naturally to you after a while when you start to relax and it'll just come natural you won't even realize really so you're going to keep chaining and then we're going to meet back here to join it up to here so it's time to join remember what I said before you've got one more on the other side so one two three four one, two, three. So number four is going to be joined up here. So you're joining it to the first single crochet. So the single crochet is here. So we're joining it into the single crochet with a slip stitch. And now we're going to slip stitch across. And that's what you do pretty much for the whole project. One row you single crochet and the next row you slip stitch across. And you can keep doing that until this section is wide, wide as you like, or until you have the fullness of your scarf. Now you can add anything you like to this section that we've got here. I'm probably going to make a flower. I mean, you could add 
something that you've bought and you know like a a factory made flour or something that you've handmade or anything really or you don't have to have add anything at all at all and you can just wear this section at the back near your neck completely up to you so let's just make sure one two three four five six seven eight nine did I just work a single crochet in that last stitch? Yes. It's a slip stitch. There we go. So chain around and join. And your next row is your slip stitch row. So I'm going to continue off screen to complete the rest of my project. I will just put it on Rachel in just a sec to show you how far I've got. Then we're going to make the rest of the scarf and join up at the end. So this is what the chain scarf looks like when it's not doubled over. That's just hanging with the one layer. And this is what it looks like. So I'm just going to twist and then flip it over. And that's what it looks like. So that's how many rows I've done so far on the camera. That even looks quite nice like that, doesn't it? but I want mine nice and chunky for when it's really cold. So I'm going to keep going and add at least another few rows. So I'll meet up with you at the end of the video. So when we're ready to finish our scarf, I've done a slip, slip, slip stitch row before. So I'm just going to slip stitch into the top there. And then I'm just going to work one more row. No, I'm not going to work another row of single crochet because that's going to make it wider and I think that's wide enough for me. That's about two and a half inches wide. So now we're going to cut off our yarn. And I just like to do a chain. I just pull out, pull tight. And now I'm going to just weaving my ends so whenever you cut your yarn curl off about two inches because you want a little bit to weave in so you're just picking somewhere to weave in I think the back's going to be easier just weaving under your stitches doesn't really matter where you go as long as you weave it in between the stitches and then hide your tails so you're just pulling out like that you can go back across if you like so there we go so you can take off your stitch marker now that actually came in really handy with me because I knew where I was up to and where the bottom was. So here's what mine looks like. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please join our Facebook page if you haven't already. I'd love to see your creations or you could also email me a photo of your creation. My email address is in the box below the video. So until next time, happy crochet. So here's what my scarf looks like and I think this is really really pretty and I can't wait to wear this in winter. At the moment it's summer, we are in the end of October and our winter doesn't start sort of May or June so I can't wear this for quite a while. So thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, please subscribe as there will be plenty more videos to come and also if you haven't joined our Facebook, Facebook, 